All right, guys, this video is for any nurse practitioner student, someone who wants to go to nurse practitioner school, someone who's in PA school, PT, OT, allied health professions. If you are in the thick of grad school or looking to apply to grad school, I'm gonna go over what first semester of nurse practitioner school looked like, what I would do differently, what I did really well, and just general recommendations. So if you are interested in that, stick around, comment, subscribe, like, all the things, let's go. All right, so a little bit of background for you guys. I am in a seven semester Master of Science in Nursing program specializing in women's health nurse practitioner and certified nurse midwifery is my dual subspecialty. So I started this program this past January of 2022. I finished first semester at the end of April and am now in the middle of my second semester. And the way that my program is specifically designed is we have online didactic year. So all of 2022 calendar year for me is part-time online class. And then the second year, as well as that seventh semester of our program is online didactic as well as local clinical placements. So if you have specific questions about how programs are structured, how to find different programs, feel free to reach out to me. I'll try to point you in the right direction. So everyone, I feel like, always wants to know how to survive patho. I myself looked up so many, you know, how do I survive patho in NP school and videos online. Nurse Liz, of course, has wonderful videos. Go check her out. But for me, it was really just getting used to the flipped classroom model. So not all NP schools or not all NP programs do this, but I feel like most of them do where you have synchronous class time like one or two times a week depending on your program but then the majority of your school work time is actually done asynchronously meaning you are teaching yourself the content and let me tell you guys i am still really struggling with that i'm getting the work done and i'm you know doing well in school and figuring it out but i'm in the middle of my second semester of seven and i still feel like i haven't gotten my groove quite yet so if you are in that spot or worried about it it's gonna be okay you can still do really well. You can still learn the content. You're not gonna have it all perfectly figured out in terms of just feeling super on top of your schedule and the way that you study. I think it's a constant learning process. So I will share a couple of things that did help me. So when I started Pathophys, I looked at the syllabus, really broke it down, and I was like, okay, let's get all the dates in the calendar, you know, just basic organizational advice, right? Put things in your calendar, planner, however you stay organized, color code things, all of that. For me, the thing that really helped the most was actually getting pretty neurotic about um, how much work I had to get done outside of class. So I would take a look at my class times. For me, I think it was like Wednesday evenings. I had ethics from 5 to 7 p.m. That was just the time slot I happened to sign up for. And then immediately after like 7.30 to 9.30 or 10, I had pathophys. So I had that day off of work every um, week, which was really wonderful. And I'm thankful my employer was able to be that flexible. Um, and so I would look at when that synchronous session was, and then I would look at the syllabus and see, okay, here is, you know, it's module four, and we're talking about immunology, and here are the chapters that are associated with this module, and then here are the lecture videos that I am required to watch, the asynchronous lecture videos before going to class, and here's any additional work like homework, case studies to review, articles that they threw in there for us to read, other assignments, etc. And I would literally, I have my textbook, y'all take my textbook and flip through it and count the number of pages in each chapter and then multiply it by my reading speed, which is way too detailed and neurotic for a lot of people I know, but it worked for me. I still do it now. But for example, this is fluids and electrolytes. I would sit here and go five minutes, 10 minutes, 15. You get the point because I knew it took me about five minutes to read a good two page spread of dense text. And it was an easy number for me to use. I would actually time myself when I read. So I would keep my watch or something close by, usually my phone in a different room or across the room. And I would pace myself. And I've told friends this, I think I'm crazy, but hey, crazy works sometimes. I do the same thing for study guides. So I would type up my own study guides or do a group study guide with my wonderful friends. You know who you are. And we would do a big Google Doc, assign modules for um, a certain test that we had in Patho. We'd each take a certain chunk of it and type it up and then when it was done i would sit there and read through the whole thing and i would give myself you know three minutes per page to study it and i would just go and say it was a 60 page study guide that would take me three hours ish a little bit longer with some breaks thrown in there now do i do this perfectly absolutely not i definitely take longer to read sometimes i need more breaks than i a lot for I don't, you know, read all the study guide like I should or even finish a study guide sometimes. It really is just 
me making my ideal study plan so I have something to work towards, but then constantly adjusting it along the way. So that's been a big thing with my perfectionism is just making these goals, but then making them highly flexible as well because most of the time my goals are not very realistic. So some of my other tips would be using external resources, which for me looked like osmosis primarily. And then I used some Picmonic videos. I think that's what it's called. I'll have to double check. Um, but osmosis saved me. It saved me in nursing school. Their preeclampsia video is still one of my favorite things of all time. Like I'll go watch it for fun, but that's because I'm a nerd about preeclampsia and I think it's fascinating. But highly recommend osmosis. My school gave us a free subscription, which is just so generous and wonderful. And I'm really thankful for that partnership. And I use their videos a lot. Well, I used them a lot last semester, at least. They're phenomenal. Highly recommend just trying out a couple different online medical learning resources and figuring out what works for you. Okay, once you have put all those things in your calendar and really figured out this is how many hours I'm going to spend on the asynchronous material for patho. Usually for me, it'd be about 10 hours a week between the readings that were required as well as the asynchronous lecture videos to watch and any other assignments or things I had to do, which was a lot. You know, it worked because I was working full time, you know, 36 hours a week in the hospital and then doing about 10 or so hours of patho, maybe more, and then maybe like three hours of ethics. So it ended up being closer to 50 hours of work a week. You know, throw in some time for planning, organization, breaks, getting procrastinated you know, maybe more like 60 hours if we're being realistic. But what really, really has helped me stay accountable and stay disciplined as much as I can is using the Pomodoro method. So if you have not heard of the Pomodoro method, it is essentially breaking up your study time into reasonable chunks with breaks embedded in them. So you can do 25 minutes of focused work with a five minute break, or you could do 50 minutes of focused work with a 10 minute break. Depending on how I'm feeling, I usually opt for the 50 and 10 model, if you will. And I'll usually do maybe two or three chunks of those. So 50 minutes of work, 10 minute break, 50 minutes of work, 10 minute break, you know, so on and so forth. And then take a good 30 minute or even 60 minute break because I can't go much longer than doing like three hours of work in one sitting without a good hour long break, whether it's a lunch break, a walk, a workout, go see a friend, run errands, take a nap, whatever it is. I honestly think if I were to do anything different last semester, it would be to, <laughs> be nicer to myself. <laughs> I put so much pressure on myself to be perfect, which sounds so cliche. It's like, oh, you struggle with perfectionism, whatever. No, I am really mean to myself and that's been a struggle of mine for a long time. We can chat about it whenever y'all want. This is like my life struggle. But I have such high expectations of myself. I'm like I have to get a 4.0 every single semester. And like, usually I do. And that's great. And I'm proud of myself, but I don't, have to, you know? I don't have to like white knuckle it and make myself get it. Like you need to be motivated by learning not to get good grades. Good grades are awesome. I freaking love good grades, okay? Big fan of the A's, big fan of the A pluses, big fan of the 4.0. But we're talking about real people, real patients, real lives that are in our hands. And so the motivation has to be to care really well for those humans and not just to get an A on a test. So when I didn't get a couple great test grades, like in the middle of my patho semester, I was so hard on myself, but honestly changing my perspective to, okay, I want to do better on this final test. Yes, to bring my grade back up to an A, but most importantly, to really learn about the body and to understand it and to view it as this incredible creation that God made and that I get to serve other humans that he also made and designed so beautifully and so uniquely and learning about their organ systems and the way that they interact is such a gift and a privilege. And honestly, that perspective shift changed everything for me. I hated the renal system. RAS, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone, oh freaked me out. I think it's fascinating now. I love the kidneys. I loved learning about the loop of Henley and all the things, okay? Hated it in underground nursing school, but honestly, that was what was on our final test, that plus GI, I think. Not my stuff. But I really enjoyed it because my perspective shifted and then I did very well on the exam. So, you know, two birds and one stone. So if you take anything away from this video, it would be to just make sure your heart and your passion and your motivation is in the right place, especially for those of you who might be applying to NP school or PA school or et cetera. Because when you're writing those purpose statements and filling out those applications, the admissions committee individuals are going to want to know your why and your why is what's gonna keep you through grad school. And I know that sounds so cliche and I hate cliches, but they're cliches for a reason because there's some truth to them. And so you have to know your why. Oh, one more tip and something that I did not do last semester, but really wanna be more serious about going forward is Sabbath. 
I really wish I had been more intentional about taking a solid 24 hours a week off of schoolwork, work work, like working in the hospital as a nurse, and then any errands. I know I've talked about The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer so many times now, but this book genuinely has changed my life, probably second to the Bible. And his Sabbath chapter is beautiful. I will link it down below. Again, I linked it in my beach vlog video because that was the book I was reading at the beach. And it is such a wake up call to just the hustle and hurry culture that we live in. And I am so susceptible to it. I love being busy. Like I actually enjoy being busy. I also am human and I have to take breaks and taking a full 24 hours is so hard, especially for us type A people to actually stop, be, and to rest and reflect and sit and enjoy and delight is life-changing and so life-giving and I honestly think empowers us to go through the rest of the week and study better more efficiently. Our brains are more refreshed and able to soak up information better. We're more present in our relationships. We're just physically more rested, emotionally, spiritually. I wish I had done that more seriously in my first semester. All right, that is all I have for you guys right now. If I think of anything else, I might make a part two of this video, but I'm actually considering doing little recaps after each semester. So like I said at the beginning, I've got seven semesters of this program. I'll plan to do another recap in August or so after the second semester and see if I think any differently from this first semester video. And if you are in grad school of any type, but more specifically in health professions grad school, feel free to leave a comment below um, if you agree with the tips I gave, if you disagree, if you would add anything to it. Um, yeah, because grad school is hard and we could all use friends to help each other out. I really appreciate you watching this video if you've made it this far. If it was helpful to you, let me know. And if you think it would be helpful to someone else, feel free to pass it along to them. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a restful week ahead. Mm -hmm.